Have you ever heard the phrase saying that everyone in Latin America has a maid? When you think about it, this is a logical impossibility. Do maids also have maids in Latin America? This conclusion comes because a far higher proportion of people in poor countries have maids than in rich countries. 7-8% to of the labor force in Brazil and 9% of that in Egypt are estimated to be employed as domestic servants. The corresponding figures are 0.7% in Germany, 0.6% in the US, 0.3% in England and Wales, 0.0.5% in Norway, and as low as 0.005% in Sweden. So in proportional terms, Brazil has 12 to 13 times more domestic servants than the US does, and Egypt has 1,800 times more than Sweden. No wonder that Americans think everyone has a maid in Latin America. The main reason why there are so much fewer domestic servants in the rich countries is the higher relative price of labor. With economic development, people become more expensive in relative terms than things. As a result, in rich countries, domestic service has become a luxury good that only the rich can afford. Whereas it is still cheap enough to be consumed even by lower middle class people in developing countries. The fall in the share of people working as domestic servants in rich countries has a reason. The washing machine. With the introduction of the electric washing machine and electric iron, the time required for washing a 38-pound load of laundry was reduced from 4 hours to 41 minutes, and the time taken to iron it was reduced from 4 to 5 hours to 1 to 75 hours. Pipe water meant that women don't have to spend hours fetching water. Vacuum cleaners have enabled us to clean our houses more thoroughly in a fraction of the time that was needed in the old days when we had to do it with broom and rags. Electric kitchen stoves and central heating have vastly reduced the time needed for collecting firewood, making fires, keeping the fires alive, and cleaning after them for heating and cooking purposes. They made it possible for far more women to join the labor market. For example, in the US, the proportion of married women in prime working ages, 35 to 45 years, who work outside the home rose for a few percent in the late 800s to nearly 90% today, most of whom we can take to have been servants rather than waitresses, given that eating out was not big business yet. With outside employment opportunities, the opportunity costs of children have risen, making families have fewer children. All of this have changed the traditional family dynamics. Compared to the changes brought by the washing machine, the impact of the internet, which many think has totally changed the world, has not been as fundamental, at least so far. The internet has of course transformed the way people spend their out-of-work hours, surfing the net, chatting with friends on Facebook, talking to them on Skype, playing electronic games with someone who's sitting 5,000 miles away, and whatnot. It has also vastly improved the efficiency with which we can find information about our insurance policies, holidays, restaurants, and even the price of broccoli and shampoo. However, when it comes to production processes, it is not clear whether the impacts have been so revolutionary. To be sure for some, the internet has profoundly changed the way in which they work. I know that by experience, thanks to the internet, we have been able to upload this video on YouTube. However, for many people in economics, the internet has not had much impact on productivity. So let's make a comparison. Just before the start of the transatlantic wired telegraph service in 8066, it took about three weeks to send a message to the other side of the pond. The time it took to cross the Atlantic by sail ships. Even going express, you had to allow two weeks. With the telegraph, the transmission time for say a 300 word message was reduced to seven or eight minutes. The New York Times reported on December 4, 8061, that Abraham Lincoln State of the Union address of 7,578 words was transmitted from Washington, D.C. to the rest of the country in 92 minutes, giving an average of 82 words per minute, which would have allowed you to send the 300-word message in less than 4 minutes. But that was a record, and the average was more like 40 words per minute giving us 7.5 minutes for a 300-word message. A reduction from 2 weeks to 7.5 minutes is by a factor of over 2,500 times. The internet reduced the transmission time of a 300-word message from 10 seconds on the VAX machine to, say, 2 seconds, but this is only a reduction by a factor of 5. 
so not that much, right? The speed reduction by the internet is greater when it comes to longer messages. It can send in 10 seconds, considering that it has to be loaded. Say a 3000 word document, which would have taken more than 60 minutes on the fax machine, giving us an acceleration in transmission speed of 100 times. But compare that to the 2500 time reduction achieved by the telegraph is still far away. The internet obviously has other revolutionary features. It allows us to send pictures at high speed. It can be used in many places, not just in post offices. But most importantly, using it, we can search for particular information we want from a vast number of sources. However, in terms of sheer acceleration in speed, it is nowhere near as revolutionary as the humble wired telegraph. We vastly overestimate the impacts of the internet only because it is affecting us now. It is not just us. Human beings tend to be fascinated by the newest and the most visible technologies. Understanding technological trends is very important for correcting and designing economic policies, both at the national and the international levels, and for making the right career choices at the individual level. However, our fascination with the latest and our undervaluation of what has already become common can and has led us into all sorts of wrong directions. I have made this point deliberately by pitting the humble washing machine against the internet, but my examples could have shown you that the ways in which technological forces have shaped economic and social developments under capitalism are much more complex than is usually believed.